Wow. I know, I know, I know Eamon, first of all. If if Lunchbox didn't just leave, he would be throwing his computer screen right now. (laughs) He would be. Um, I don't. I don't know if he got out in time. Uh, but anyways, no. I know. For instance, we talked about how it was great that you guys can watch uh, wrestling from Japan live. I know. For instance, I was getting up at about five thirty in the morning, and I was seeing your tweets about the end of New Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> yeah. So I was so, up in, well, it would be seven o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. That, mm-hmm. uh, I believe that was up seven thirty uh, uh, Eastern Time. Um, it was a trip being up that late to watch wrestling. It was actually, I, I, I felt like, you know, there was times where I kind of, you know, not often in times, but I mean, overall, I, I, it was, it was pretty well, you know, well done. I'm more nodded off during Raw than anything, um, which, you know, hey, it's not, not too You hard, were, but. you were especially angry at Raw. I noticed. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Afterwards, uh, you're like, you're like, I was, I was watching Japanese wrestling at four in the morning. Fuck this. I, just I, I, I know that. I mean, that just that just kind of colors your interpretation at that point. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, Eamon, did you make it all the way through the through the night? I did make it all the way. Uh, <laughs> I made it to the yeah to right to the end of uh, Okada's uh, big promo. Uh, spoiler alert for anyone who didn't watch the show. Whatever. I didn't uh, go. I actually started when I was actually I actually work overnight, so I was already up when the show started. I just stayed up all the way through. Nice. I'll, 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 up, I'll be beginning at that extremely awkward pre-show all the way to oh, the God. end. Yeah, <laughs> pre-show. Oh. Sorg, Sorg, there are a few gifts for you in the uh, I see. I will we'll, we'll throw... check it out. They're in chronological order, so if you just go to the very first one that I dropped in there, there's about three of those uh, dancing uh, whatever they are. Um, Can we, that okay, was, okay, that's that the first a, thing. That was a Twitter highlight for me was the reactions <laughs> on Twitter to the pre-show. This, this Not just is... that, but even the New Japan Rumble where, damn it, King Haku showed up. Yes. King Haku. Cheeseburger showed up too. The great, the, Cheeseburger showed up. The, the great Kabuki. Like Fujiwara. The great Kabuki was there, and he was super old, and you could only just miss the dude. <laughs> and that was it. Not a super old guy. I think Cheeseburger is by far the youngest guy in the whole match. It was, and he lasted the like final five. <laughs> like he was beating, so he was beating like Tenzan and Kojima. Like, that's, that's an interesting choice. <laughs> That must have been in the fine print of the latest New Japan Ring of Honor uh, agreement. Possibly, possibly. All right. Okay. First of all, like let's 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 let's. So the Battle Royal, amazing. Seeing the names in there, the Liger. Well, it wasn't amazing. It was terrible. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> all right, all right. Wait, 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 wait. Let's put this in context. You have the pre-show Battle Royal from Wrestle Kingdom Ten. And then you had the gimmick battle royal from like WrestleMania 18 or something like that. 17. 17 yeah. Wow. Um, Sorry. <laughs> which do you hold in higher regard? Uh, the gimmick battle royal times 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I know. Mean, I, mean, I can't I, shake the image of Cheeseburger trying to fight Fujiwara during the. It was Fujiwara. funny to have uh, Liger and who else was it? Was somebody else fighting over Cheeseburger? Oh, like Liger, I think it was Liger and Tiger Mask at yeah. one point. Yeah. <laughs> like, like there were some legitimate like Japanese legends in there, and, and and the nerd side of me really enjoyed it. I, as old as he was, I was glad to see the great Kabuki because he's you know, uh, you know, real sort of kind of trendsetter for you know a lot of people in wrestling. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it, it was it's not the it was never going to be the most technical thing. Like that's the thing with the Wrestle Kingdom shows traditionally is they always kind of start with like a like usually it's like an eight on uh, four on four tag that's just like you know guys just doing stuff and it's not super you know enthralling or anything. But uh, yeah, it's it, I I mean I thought it was a cool kind of concept. Um, <laughs> it, it was I will say this: uh, it was the only match on the show I watched with English commentary <laughs> because I absolutely gave up after that. Okay, let's, oh, let's touch yeah. on that. You you you. I was you kind of giving up. You are our commentary person, and you told me a little bit about this. I can't say it got better through the rest of the night, but it just kind of got suppressed through the rest of the night. But Yoshi Tatsu might have been the the biggest mistake of the show. I, I was very worried when I heard Yoshi was on commentary because he's not, not not that I mean he speaks English, but he's not um, wordy. He's not a very wordy person. <laughs> Whereas Matt Striker is the exact opposite. He's way too wordy sometimes. Mm-hmm. And and. I, and not to knock anybody, because I'm, you know, who am I to 
you know, say whatever. But it just I don't feel it was a smart move because Matt Striker like kept feeding him questions, but he just kept like no selling, and it's like. It just made for a really awkward scenario. I feel like I feel like Yoshi. Every time he was asked a question, like the, not seeing these guys was like Yoshi was like sitting there, like stop asking me stuff. I'm watching this match, you know, in, in like in his facial expressions. Yeah, it was even, even the weird. things he was there to do. He was there to translate stuff. I don't feel like he translated anything very effectively. He just kind of like would mumble into the microphone. My favorite thing was whenever Stryker would ask Yoshitatsu a question and you would hear silence and then he or Kevin Kelly would have to tell you that Yoshitatsu is nodding his head right now. He can not even be bothered to say a word. He's just that. sitting there going like nodding his head. Or, or the pain for the one match where um, um, I think Yoshi's trying to talk about like a story about Nakamura from back in the day and something but something cool happens so he gets stopped and like a minute later he goes back to the story. <laughs> like yeah, he's trying yeah. like really really hard at that um but <laughs> I mean, here's guards are saying that uh uh yoshi was there to translate it, but the one who fucked up is striker trying to get a uh, conversation out of him i i, well, I mean li- listen all right and, and maybe amy can speak more to this too but when you're in a situation where someone is just like not working you, that's what you do. You've got to keep trying to engage them. You got to warm them up so they start to talk a little bit. And I think that's what Striker was trying to but do. But also, trying to get I, engaged in the conversation. That's true, and I, and I don't know how. Uh, for example, I, I, I know. I mean, Yoshi, I, like I said, Yoshi speaks English, but I don't know how you know well his English necessary is. So he, they were asking him maybe some complex questions that he maybe had only heard parts of, and, and like didn't fully like a lot of times like they would ask him a complex like a complex question of like you know how does it feel with like you know stop like they're working down on styles how much styles you know you know be feeling right now and yoshi would just go yes like <laughs> you know, they asked him what's uh like i think maybe um after uh hanma and uh oh uh, no i forgot um, Makabe. Makabe's won the titles and they're like what does this mean for japan yoshi tots there and he's just like I, I could hear him shrugging. I was just like, <laughs> he's just like, well, I don't know what it means. Like, like, what do you mean by that? Like, I don't know. What you got. Japan right now, Yoshitatsu. Tell me. <laughs> wow. It's, wow. it's um, I, yeah, I don't know if he completely got it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone with Yoshi. Uh, I, I even Kevin Kelly and Matt Trigger weren't amazing at times. Um, uh, I, I didn't listen to the, the actual English commentary, but a couple people were pointing out that, like, I think at some point Matt Striker made sort of a dropping bomb joke. He did. He definitely and it's, did. And it's like, you don't do that. Oh, oh. Japan, they would just, you don't do anything like that. You just drop bombs. I was like, oh. It's like, you, <laughs> you don't do that at all. Somebody forgot what continent he was on. Um, uh, wow. Well, I, 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 I like Striker just because I'm a sick puppy. But and, and I thought um, I thought Kevin Kelly for the most part did an admirable job. He's not Jim Ross, um, no. but I thought he deli- I thought he was especially and I thought he really delivered especially in the um, the final two or three matches. I thought he was really good, just conveying the emotion, and kind of getting me into it. Yeah, I think Matt Striker. How could you get not get into that kind of a matches? But yeah, I think Matt Striker can be good, but sometimes he gets a little like just a little too excited and starts doing the insider terms and mm-hmm. talking about, there's no slapping of the leg here. It's like, what are you talking about? Why would you, you shouldn't that? be saying that. Like, why would you say that? Uh, no you... slapping of the leg. Like you just buried the entire business. Up there right now. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know what context was going into the matches. And I, I didn't know if this was related to what we just talked about in a, a, a couple seconds ago, but um, there was a mention at the end of AJ and Nakamura about, it would be a shame for either of these guys to leave new Japan pro wrestling. Was that something maybe already going around? At that point, or is there some other story about maybe one of them leaving? Officially? Uh, possibly. Um, I, I mean, I, I can only assume that you know this is something that these guys knew for a, a, a little while now, but was eventually going to happen. I don't know how long New Japan knew necessarily. Um, maybe, mm-hmm. possibly. I don't know. Uh, I think I've heard some reports um, about this whole deal. Is that uh, Styles has been working in New Japan without a contract? Right. So that might have been something that they're alluding to also. That could be. That could be. Um, but okay. Other than that, um, I, I, I do, do. We have to give it a minute because I, I, I want to use these gifts. But the uh, odd anime. I thought that it was awkward and interesting when Terminator came out at WrestleMania <laughs> this past year. Uh, but this year we got. Uh, what is this again? <laughs> uh, I, I actually have it up. It's a. Uh, 
uh, the the anime or whatever is called Doraemon, I mm. think is is, the, is how you pronounce it. And they're promoting uh, the new movie Doraemon Nobita and the Birth of Japan 2016. Oh man! Um, oh, wait, that's the that's entire not, name so, at the bottom. Yeah. I, yeah. I believe I've read somewhere this is the 23rd movie well, it, in it, the Doraemon series. It says it's a, it's a very it's a very popular. Name. It says 36th on the title here. So oh, 36. I'm, I still am short that. I guess I'm sorry. Yeah, that. yeah. 36 uh, is better than Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. They like their franchises over in Japan, and I don't know. I and mean, the 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 meme that that I know you shared earlier, Matt, of uh, this blue character, uh, the Dorimon, I suppose, um, being signed to NXT uh, is pretty. Tremendous. Oh my I can't god! Wait. <laughs> Photoshopping him in next to Triple H in the oh. NXT arena. Oh, that's so, so great. freaking funny! I cracked up. I was just like, yes, I want to see this thing versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. <laughs> just do it right now. I want to see him kill this blue cat. <laughs> I, in its corner. I was super. just shocked that the whole thing didn't end with uh, the young bucks coming out and super kicking everyone. Oh, since that was supposed <laughs> to be the opener. Um, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, it's the equivalent of them bringing in, you know, like a, like like you said, like you know, doing the Terminator stuff during WrestleMania. Um, it's about twenty minutes. It felt like to the to the pre-show <laughs> for it though was an interesting choice. I don't know. I, I think that was a little uh, little cash, little, little money bag got handed off there for that. Uh, I think this is yeah, just. I idea. think this is just how Japan rolls. You know, maybe, I mean, they were, they, maybe they were marking out Japan over. You know, I, maybe yeah. it was like twenty minutes wasn't enough. We needed forty. I know? mean, I know. <laughs> I know the pan the pan away. I did notice the pan away from this. So so they finished their dance and the 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 giant things are walking back and 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 just like there's just a row of people just sitting in their chairs turning around just like like they were shaking their heads. They were not interested like, I in what they're it, not seeing like, this in like America. The, the, That's what they're thinking. Or like they're like they don't do this kind of shit at WrestleMania, um, <laughs> you know, or or something like that. Like at least the people that bought the good seats, um, they they were definitely not interested in this kind of thing. So I just as as insane and surreal as it was, I will never forget watching this. No, live no, at no. three in the morning with my phone open and just watching my Twitter feed explode. The the jokes that were being thrown around were oh. it, it probably. I was laughing so hard. It probably gave me an extra 30 minutes of staying awake to watch the show because it got me so fired up. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, it really had no redeeming value. Other All than right. For- <laughs> Beyond that, there was wrestling at the show. There was also wrestling. Uh, this, at the, of a Japanese style. Um, <laughs> top to bottom. I mean, what's that? Michael Ben is about to make his TNA debut. Just, just a side note. Okay. <laughs> I was you're, getting your, you're getting your live TNA scoring updates right here. Yeah, there it is. we go. <laughs> there it is. Sorry about your damn spoilers during this show. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I see what you did. It's on right now. Though. People can can't watch it. They can watch it right now. It's unlike it's on pay because they're <laughs> dedicated to watching this show. Because they're, they're good fans. This podcast live, and they're mad because we're spoiling the wrestling show that's on television. <laughs> exactly. This is what we've come to. <laughs> this is this is our advances advances in technology. This is where we've come from from in ten years. <laughs> Um, Feels good. Feels good. But the turnaround is the people that have picked the TNA and are getting mad because we're spoiling uh, what's happening on the Mayhem show on Twitter. Um, yeah. <laughs> so should we go through let's go through these matches Eamon I just, yeah I, I, I want to profess my love for Matt Seidel and Ricochet and, oh and, and my god yes up here. the the, the um, their uh, like t- perfectly timed like moonsault shooting stars were my favorite things I freaking love that standing double somersault yeah and they hit it. every time I've seen them do it they hit it they're Man, my favorite perfectly. tag team in, they're my favorite yeah. tag team in the world right now there's I would have nothing better than those two. I actually yeah. see this match. I had issues with my New Japan World uh, account, but I missed this entire match. So, <laughs> it was Michael the, Bennett it was like Armando Estrada on TV right now. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I don't know why. What? <laughs> what? It's nice. Friend of the Try show. Something new. Uh, uh, yeah, but, it's new. Definitely. Yeah. New. Um, uh, yeah, it was. I, I mean, it was definitely you know the type of action you would normally see from those eight. I mean, uh, you know. You, so I think the tradition past couple of years or whatever has been the four way tag junior tag title match. Um, I liked it. I thought, um, uh, you know, good, obviously a good way to kick off the show. Uh, yeah. Young Bucks winning was interesting. I, I didn't. I, I was, you know, in. I was personally on the side of either Red Dragon retaining or 
like you said, Ricochet and Matt Seidel taking it. Um, obviously, Young Bucks are, you know, pretty big deal. But, uh, yeah. Knowing what we know today that we didn't know on Monday morning about where things were going for New Japan, um, it makes more sense that the Young Bucks won those titles. Mm. They strengthened Bullet Club a little bit. Um, it was an awesome match. What do you want? What, what else do you want me to say? <laughs> Cody Hall's come a long way. Oh yeah, <laughs> With the razor's edge to ricochet onto like eight people on the floor. It was insane. <laughs> what was the and then Ricochet did like oh his like springboard shooting star into like Cody Hall where he oh. went, he went out of the frame of the hard cam. It was pretty <laughs> amazing. There's no way I would try that with what with with. with someone with his uh, level of experience. But, hey, big target. I guess Ricochet felt like he could hit him. So, and he did. It all works out. It's good. It's just, it, it's good. All right. That's good. I don't know if he's next, but I, I keep looking at this gift, so I have to bring it up next. But the fact that there was a Doc Brown involved in a match uh, against Kenny Omega uh, <laughs> is just still blowing my mind right now. Uh, yeah, so. it reached... Um, the, the, the time splitter gimmick reached its apex at oh, WrestleMania yeah. 10. It, it, it was pretty like to the point where I can't believe I watched a wrestling show that was a real wrestling show, not independent, where somebody dressed as Doc Brown actually got involved in the match, and I think like uh, took a shot at one of the young bucks um, during mm. it. Uh, that that's that that's amazing, and Kenny Omega is just amazing as well. So uh, so so so. That that's my that's my like theatrical interesting match for this where it was like my introduction to Prince Devitt last year I think so yeah it's funny like we we like when you when you first start watching Japanese wrestling you have this idea of like what it's gonna be and then you get like something like this from New Japan it just gets like totally bizarre um, mm. but you don't care because you're just you know you're rolling with it. Did we which which match did we skip over here? Oh, well, we, 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 uh, we six you man. Had a, you had the never six uh, man. The six man tag. Uh, I don't remember a lot about this match. Uh, I liked I liked Toriano because uh, he too. jokes and it's really funny. Um, I feel like I really hope that like the Briscoes aren't like 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 how I think WWE like kind of interprets like Japanese wrestlers. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's how Japan views us. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they a lot of Americans. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it was decent. I don't really remember a whole lot of it. I, I um, want to know how Redneck Kung Fu went over in Japan. It was kind of old. It seemed, it seemed to go okay. Mark was working. It, it's funny when there's no there's no noise at all in the crowd. They're sitting there in silence, and you hear Mark Briscoe just yelling and screaming, or Jay Briscoe <laughs> yelling at the crowd, yeah, and there's yeah. no response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you <laughs> could tell that the Briscoes were there to to, to get some eyes on them because they, they came out like just screaming for attention. It was cool just to see them enter. Just making their entrance in an arena that big, like yeah. thirty five thousand people. I'm like sitting there wondering, like, has they, have they ever been in front of this many people before? In I, Japan, I, maybe, I'm not sure of that many people. I don't know. Man, that's that was a crazy crowd, um, but it's awesome for them. That's great. Um, and they beat those three losers from the Bullet Club, so it's all but right. you know, isn't Aww. it isn't it kind of <laughs> isn't it kind of because no, I was gonna make a comparison there. I really didn't work. Move on. <laughs> no, very good. Are you gonna do, 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 like, yeah. Were you going to compare anything to Sushi Sword? Don't do that. No, 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 no. It was kind of just a, a, arena sizes and, 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 and stuff like that. But uh, but never mind. Never mind. Um, oh, yeah. No, no. It, it, I'm still working it out in my head. I'll come back to it. Okay, good deal. What was uh, what was next, Damon? Then, then we had the Ring of Honor title match. Uh, Big Mike. Not a bad Which match. I, I was kind of – that was the one match on the card I was underwhelmed by. Um, I, well, I don't know. I, I feel like – the, you know, and Big Mike, you know, was, was you know got rave reviews and all that stuff for his the stuff he did in the G one this year, uh, and, and you know, and, and well deserved. Uh, I just felt like it was very underwhelming. I, I it felt very short for a Ring of Honor World Title match. Yeah, um, but it's, it's not Ring of Honor, so I guess they don't dedicate that much time to it. That's true. Yeah, and I think it was a case, it was a case of that. Uh, I don't know. You just kind of expect more from those two. And not, I mean, not to knock them or anything. It just felt very, I don't know, basic, you know? I think Michael like Bennett just... is, is over, though, over there. I think, hmm. not Michael Bennett, Michael Elgin, uh, with his feats of strength. I think they that definitely uh, caught, a lot, caught a lot of oohs and ahs from the fans over there. So I think he's he's built up quite a following over there just from that, just, you know, catching people out of midair and doing different feats of strength he does. Mm-hmm. They don't see that a lot over there. 
Uh, with, yeah. with their guys. So when they see Big Mike does it, do it, it's like, ooh, you know, who is this guy? You know. So okay. that's what I took away from it more, more, more than anything is that that Michael Elgin um, might have carved out a little niche for him over there in Japan. Yeah, and hopefully so. Like I think he's a good fit. I, I do think he's a good fit over there overall. We I know we'll get to the match. I think it's the never went the never weight championship. The one that uh, the, never the, never open weight championship. The never open weight. That's the one that was like the brutal match of the mu- night, right? Oh my God. Uh, uh, Jesus. Can, by, by the way, impressed with that two years in a row. Um, could you imagine a Michael Elgin in that match? That kind of match? I mean, he could kill somebody. Kill somebody. <laughs> yeah. He's too oh. big. He's Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But I, I think it'd be interesting. But sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, well uh, Tomohiro Ishii and uh, Elgin had it in the G1. That was one of the best matches of that tournament, wasn't it? I have to go back and watch that one, but I think that was one of the big matches that really got Elgin going. So, Big Mike, what else can you say? That's all I could say. Every time I see him now, Big Mike, <laughs> it's a stupid thing, but I guess it works in Japan. Okay. Uh, then we had the uh, the junior heavyweight title match, uh, which was I, I, up until that point, I think the best match on the card. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very good. Kenny Omega is a star over there, and I and I love it. Uh, uh, I, I, I was fully in, like, it, it was a very, uh, very great match. Uh, I, once Kenny did the, uh, the one arm power bomb, I was, I was all in, I was all in at that point. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I agree. It was a great match. Uh, Kenny Omega did a lot of selling with that one arm because the other arm like it genuinely had a, an injury to it. Like it looked swollen or something like that. It was, mm-hmm. it was kind of crazy, but he, he did a, a great job selling in that match. Uh, Kushida's always fun to watch. Uh, the Doc Brown stuff is always cool. I like the Young Bucks playing with the trash cans, the Determinator theme in the trash cans. Yes, yes. That was funny. Uh, <laughs> but the match itself was good. It was a really it was a really fun match. I like the theme as well. This is also the first match, and I think, and then this has been the thing. I don't know, uh, Sorg, I want to know what you thought since you are a full, full follower in New Japan. The interference, because that's the one thing I think the Bullet Club kind of, uh, you know, put more into New Japan is you before, you know, the, the major stuff with the Bullet Club when they rose to popularity, you didn't see a lot of the big interference stuff. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of that on the show. Now, even with the Bullet Club stuff, we'll get to uh, Naito and uh, Goto later on. Um, what, 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 what did you think of that? So did it throw you off? Like, like when you were watching it? it? It did because this match probably could have been better without the interference. Right, right. Especially with performers like that. But it's also like, almost the only match that had that uh but it also um felt like an american match <laughs> because right. of it, I think yeah, it would to be me. better without it though i think it definitely oh, yeah. would be better but yeah i don't uh, think it would still really good necessary yeah i mean i think i think omega and koshida could go star 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 stars however high you want to go if they wanted to have just a pure wrestling match but i mean there's so much pure wrestling on this show anyways i think you know, from a variety standpoint, I think it's cool to kind of like mix things up here and there. So I think, I think the match was awesome, and I think it served a purpose in being kind of like this chaotic, um, interference-filled kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And also important having Koshida win because I mean, I think someone pointed out how many foreigners were on this uh, card for this uh, Wrestle Kingdom show. So it was good to see mm-hmm. those Japanese guys get their win for the hometown fans. <laughs> <laughs> Send them home happy. Right. Uh, yeah, and after that, we move on to the uh, heavyweight tag title match with uh, Bullet Club against uh, Homa and uh, Makabe. Um, I like this. Uh, Homa is, is, is definitely still over, uh, even after the whole uh, uh, you know news that, that broke uh, not too long ago, uh, which, is, which is good for him. Uh, yeah, I like this match. Um, uh, I'm very interested to see how Gallows and... Um, uh, Anderson fit in WWE. If, if, if everything that we've been hearing is is true, um, <laughs> mainly from the fact that Anderson loves the curse. They <laughs> <laughs> do. They were on the. Uh, I'm sorry. I was I was watching the the first part of um the Tuesday morning show. Whatever. Uh, New Year's. Uh, Rush, New, Year, New, Year, New Year Dash. Yeah. No, New Year Dash. Ra- Dash. 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 Yeah. Matter. Um. And uh, if you go check out the uh, the match that Gallows and uh, Anderson are in, after the match, they walk over to the announce the English announce position, and Anderson takes off Kevin Kelly's headset and lets loose 
a string of expletives in your head, you know, that will that will curl your hair. It's unbelievable. So yeah, he's got to adapt that. And I don't know what the hell Carl Anderson is going to do with, with himself without the gun stun because that is that is just everything. Yeah, that's the RKO. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, I I think I have a suggestion. I say give him the Stone Cold Stunner. It's basically the same move, and the other guy isn't using it. So the other guy. <sighs> more like the spring, like springboard stunner we'll, we'll be alright yeah get rid of that uh, thing too yeah yeah but uh, uh yeah no, I like this match and I think yeah Makabe and, and Homa winning was, uh, was the right choice Homa wins the title like he, he doesn't even win matches he has a title now how about that yeah yeah, yeah. He, it's a great. I love a good understudy. You know, you know, funny thing to me is that we talked about Yoshi Tatsu not really being all that like, excited, but this one match, he got really excited for Hanuma. Like when he did some <laughs> headbutts, he, he got excited for Hanuma's uh, the Kakeshi headbutt. Like when he did off the top, he was like, oh, he couldn't, he couldn't believe it at the headbutt. So if there's one thing, Yoshi Tatsu got excited for Hanuma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I believe. And I believe from this point on, this was my – this is where the show, like, delivered match after match after match for me, personally. And that was uh, uh, Tetsuya Naito uh, taking on Hiroki Goto. Um, I can't pronounce Naito's stable's name, and I hate it. Oh, yeah. um, we need to get Garza in here to uh, help us out with this. Sorry, it's a lot of letters. <laughs> What's the English trans- – I forget the English trans- – like, the um... – Oh, um, I it's saw It's a him. basic word that we can say easily. Just, just yeah, it's, it's on – it's on Wikipedia. I, I saw. I have to. I'll have to look it up. But um, no, I love his stable. Um, personally, because of the fact I got to work with uh, Watanabe in Inspire Pro, aka Evil, and he has he has <laughs> such an amazing look right now. Like he, I love, especially with like the giant sword that he came out with. It was oh, amazing. This yeah. is they the one. This is... name, they had to give a better name. Evil. I, I don't know. I like. It's all capitalized though. So this yeah. is. Oh. This is the group that I'm came sure it looks out. Awesome in Japan. So. <laughs> <laughs> like it's evil. It's evil. Naito's amazing. I've never seen anyone do this kind of character before. Just like total slacker. I don't give an f. Well, he would, and you know he's good. It's just to give, so give Naito like sort of a backstory. I don't know if sort of you kind of like the story necessarily. Last year or so, around that, like he was kind of the Roman Reigns in a sense. Yeah. In the sense yeah. that he was the guy that was being positioned for like the top, you know, position, but people weren't really buying into him. Even two years ago, when they voted, they had people vote for the main event for the Wrestle Kingdom. They vote. He was in title match. He won a G one. It's in a title match against Okada. But he, he, but he wasn't in the main event. Right. They voted Nakamura and Tanahashi the IC title match in the main event. So he, they didn't even like him two years. Like they really don't like him as a babyface. I didn't. Yeah. As a matter of fact. Very yeah, tight. but him him in this role is perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, I the opening, and I'm not even talking about the wrestling. Just part where from when Goto starts coming out is amazing. Like there's a, such an intensity to it. Like he's like there's such an intensity to Goto especially, but just like Naito like shoving down the cameraman and like <laughs> it was it was really beautifully done. Um, yeah, they're I mean, not nice people. No, they are. not um, And I, I uh, it was a, it was. To me, a teaser for the next match on the card because there were some really like hard like Naito landed on his neck a lot. In the oh. <laughs> there was some. There was like a nasty table spot during this uh, match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did like a neck breaker onto a table outside the ring, and it didn't break because that's what tables in Japan do. They yeah, do yeah, not yeah. break. <laughs> it broke as well as well. Well, because here's the thing: people crap on the Japanese table. Like like Bacha <laughs> a lot. But he, he, well, the thing is, they legit they they intentionally do not cut the tables, right? Because guess what, guys? Tables aren't supposed to break like they break in WWE. That's not how tables work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get my dander up now. All right. Oh no, physics. <laughs> so it, it's technically how they should break. But no, I, I like I said, I really enjoyed the, the yeah the top rope. Uh, uh, Yoshi Tonic thing where Naito just had, landed neck first was just nasty. Um, yeah, and Goto going over was a bit of a surprise, but I, I, I still thought it worked. Yeah, by the way, uh, it's Los Igo, Ig, Igno, Ingo Bernables. It's, I think that's right. <laughs> Spanish for the Unforgivables, I think, or Ungovernable. Oh, that's it, yeah, Ungovernable. Google, yeah. Google Translate gave me unruly, so, I mean, either way, I, mean, I could, <laughs> could get the... Uh, yeah. 
They're on something. Yeah, they're, they're yes. not nice people. They're not nice people. They can't be controlled. Mm-hmm. These people are, they do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Encourageables, that's what I'm going to call them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but then we went to uh, the match that we mentioned, the uh, never open weight title match with Ishii and Shibata. Um, there's, I think we kind of brought, I mean, it's kind of what we brought up in the big question about how, like, it's cool to see talents that we've never thought we'd see in WWE, like, kind of make it now. Um, I feel like Ishii and Shibata are the two of the guys that could conceivably never make it in the WWE. <laughs> like, from a, from a safety perspective. <laughs> You I, probably really have a point. I think Ishii. I think Ishii's got a look that would work in America. Oh, absolutely. Uh, even if it's not necessarily in, in WWE, and if you can convince him not to, you know, bash people in the head with his own head, <laughs> might have a chance. Like he uppercutted Shibata with his own head. Like they cracked each other's skulls. Like banged each other's skulls. Like yeah, two, two rams in the wild, just bang. And there was no like work. This wasn't like a work type of thing. There was no space in between. They literally ran their heads into each other. Like, it was no tomorrow. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like, oh, we hit him in the shoulder. Like, you know, people do a headbutt. Like, I remember Dave yeah. Grant and Dolph Ziggler at WrestleMania, at the top of the ladder. They were hitting each other in the shoulders, like, in the neck shoulder area. Yeah. Like, they would hit each other in the head. It was disturbing. It, it was like, wait, wait, wait. We're, we're, like, you think twice about, I don't know. It was just weird. Like, you, that sound was sickening. Like, I just, I never seen it like that before in my life. I hope to never see it again, actually, because that's – we got all this stuff about concussions and CTE, and then you got these two guys just banging their heads against each other. That's crazy. Is this, that is just nuts. This is the second year in a row that this division delivered, like, the most jaw-dropping match for me, not the flippy stuff, not anything else, as much as I love everything else. Um, and I'm watching the, the set styles clash on loop in here in preparation for what we're about to talk about. Um, but like, is this like, is the point of this division to be kind of the closer to MMA crossover bit or just, just seeking the most, just seeking brutality in, 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 in some fashion? Well, like, te- I mean, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, going with the term and I may be wrong here, but like going with the term sort of open weight, like it's a, it technically it's a belt for anyone okay but in the sense of you know it is a bit it's kind of developed especially with ishii's reign as as more of the hard-hitting strong style kind of belt um i think that especially with this like this is the match that i think most people think that japanese wrestling is (laughs) like i don't Mm -hmm. like there's some amazing matches on at wrestle kingdom but especially with the last two matches on the card, there was a lot of great storytelling that was very that was very much done, and, and there's still a storytelling aspect of Japanese wrestling. This is what most people think Japanese wrestling is, which is just two dudes hitting each other a lot, dropping each other on their heads, like that kind of style. Um, I, and I'm, I kind, it kind of makes me think back to uh, Wrestle Kingdom Nine and watching the Never Title match between Makabe mm-hmm. and Ishii. And that's what I was thinking when I was watching that match um, a year ago. I was watching. I'm like, this is what my brain thinks is Japanese wrestling is, but it didn't make me uncomfortable. Last year's match, yeah. This year's match kind of crossed the line, and, and now I'm starting to wonder. I'm like, were, were they? Were, were, maybe Makabe and Ishii were, were banging each other's heads last year, and I just kind of like forgot about it. I don't remember that at all. That that um, was vividly stick in my mind forever. Somebody. Well, just- Two and anim- like like two animals in the wild just banging each other's heads like that's what rams do in the wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was Shibata that said prior like in an interview like days before the the match or whatever saying this I know basically in layman's terms saying I know that I'm preparing to go into a match that will shave years off of my life. Ugh. Like that is literally what he said. Well, uh, I mean, in comparison, I mean, I, I, I'm somebody that's brought up my 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 experience with Japanese wrestling was uh, Strangle Fucking Mania, okay? Uh, okay, okay which, yeah. <laughs> which were Japanese tapes and usually the hardcore stuff uh, that ICP did commentary over and released uh, without asking anybody um, and, <laughs> and in the 90s. And, uh, and I bought it again on DVD, by the way. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's that, like you said, that's, that's your exposure to it is stuff like that, you know, or even... Uh, I think Asuka kind of represents that a little bit with her hard hitting style, right? That we're seeing yeah. in NXT right now. Um, they're like, yeah, this is Japanese stuff. And I think even even Baylor and um, uh, 
whatever his name is now, uh, he's been Hitami. injured. Hitami. Hitami, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, represent that a little bit as well. Uh, but but this is like the epitome of that, certainly. Absolutely. But yeah, and then we go into the. Uh, oh wait, I got one more. I got a nugget here. I I, I thought we should mention this because we were talking about what the never title is. But I don't know if you knew, guys knew that never actually stands for something. Oh that, yeah, it does stand for something. It is an acronym. Thanks, Wikipedia, for new blood, evolution, valiantly, eternal, and radical. There's nothing in this name that says anything about bashing each other in the head. I can't remember. So, yeah, no. it's good I to see. If it, if it gives you a, a, a test, I can't remember if he was the first champion, but he was uh, the other like big prominent never openweight champion. I think in recent memory has been Masato Tanaka. Mm. And for those that know Masato Tanaka from his oh, baby. PW, like it's you can see you know the comparisons. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was like supposed to be like the like developmental or something like that, right? From what I remember, like. NXT and you know, it was going to serve that purpose, but they just never went through with it, something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and, but no, I think the belt is kind of it, – it's now, I think, that's the belt. It's on par with the Intercontinental and the heavyweight title right now in, in, in New Japan. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, speaking of the Intercontinental title match, Nakamura versus AJ Styles, uh, first time oh. ever one-on-one, uh, which is so shocking, like – like I, I feel like you you think you know, all like with all the G ones and all the stuff you know you would think oh Nakamura and AJ had to have wrestled you know one on one at least once but never apparently, um, which is so cool. Um, yeah, this was great. Um, this was also another very uh, gift worthy match because I think as much as the gifts of uh, of the pre show uh, twenty minute dance party. Uh, uh, we're being shared around on Twitter. The other, the other most shared around thing was uh, AJ Styles uh, imaginarily shooting Nakamura. Nakamura catching the invisible bullet. <laughs> oh, so great! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's good stuff, man. That stuff you can't teach. No, no, you can't. That's the kind of thing that you see Nakamura do, and you're like, he can, he can make it work in America. You can't teach that. You can't script that either. That's just something mm-hmm. that's just innate. And you just do it. Mm. And it was awesome. It was awesome. This whole match was awesome. The The Styles Clash in Japan is literally the equivalent of a gun. I mean, like, that move has hurt a couple people really bad. Including the now it yeah. puts the fear of God into everybody every time he hits it. Um, and then they put the twist on it with the... Um, with, with the one arm, he, he came out of like a triangle. Yeah, and he stood up. Arm or something. Stood, stood up, stood up, up with his him. arm and then just did it. Boom. Hooked one arm and, and did the Styles Clash. And, <laughs> and I mean, this is this is the point in the uh, in the show where for me, like like Kevin Kelly, like was like at his peak because he's like freaking out. He, he's like selling so hard that that's the end of the match. And then when he kicks out, it's pretty awesome. And talking about stiff shots. Uh, uh, the Beaumier. Oh. Well, both of them, I mean, were... Ooh. Uh, the right to the back of the neck looks devastating. I mean, I know, I, I'm know i pretty sure he's doing it as safe as possible, but it just looks devastating. Like, it's going to paralyze you. It, it's it's one of my favorite moves right now in wrestling. Like, the, like that's probably one of the best finishers that, yeah. that, that's out right now. Oh, yeah. like, it looks like it just, it just kills you, especially when he does it from behind. Like, you're just getting shot in the back of the head. And the way AJ sold it when it's like his head is down on the map, but his butt is in the air, like he's just completely limp. Like that's good he, stuff right there. Yeah, I mean, he sold it like uh, Abushi did last year, and I was I didn't think anybody could take it like Abushi <laughs> took it last year. But yeah, Styles, ooh. um, yeah, that was really fantastic. Awesome. And yeah, and yeah, and then we go on to the uh, the main event with uh, Tanahashi and Okada. Um, Another, like I said, really fantastic match. A lot of great storytelling here. Um, a lot of great, like, like I think people think this kind of style of wrestling is, like, this style, but also, like, the kind of the Ring of Honor style is the best way I could put it. They think it's very much just, like, move, move. <clears throat> no real storytelling. But they did a lot of great storytelling in this match. Uh, the mo- Just the moment of, like, going towards the end and, and um, Okada doing that run, going for that one Rainmaker and then, like, and sort of collapsing and like um, 
like ha- like having a str- that that struggle where like they both had each other like kind of gripped or whatever. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing. Uh, really really fun match. I, I typically don't like the, the the matches where they just go finish kick out finish kick out near fall near fall, but it fit this story because. This is the eighth match in the series. These are the yeah. two top guys in the in the business over there. These are the guys. So you're at a different level here. And like I said, this is the eighth match in the series. It's like this is the first match. Well, you see that with a lot of guys in their first matches together. They'll have kick out all the finishers and all this and that. Yeah. They fit this one because they probably hit one finisher before and one. Or hit two finishers before and one. And they, they built it to where now one finish ain't going to do it. Not with these two because they're, the they're the two top guys in Japan. And this is the eighth time, you know, and, mm-hmm. it's, and it's for all the marbles. And it means a lot, especially for Okada, because he never beat uh, Tanahashi in a dome. So it fit this narrative. And it just, I mean, I thought it was over a couple of times. Like, I really thought it was over when I think Tanahashi hit at least one high fly flow and he kicked out. I'm like, oh, God, this is crazy. Then I figured after Okada hit one Rainmaker, it was over. And no, he had hit two or three more. Mm-hmm. But but even though that's it seems gratuitous sometimes, in this specific instance it fit because, you know that's just how these two guys have been built up for all this time for what now four years since Okada got, went back to New Japan. Yeah, I mean if it, it, it fit this specific narrative, I wouldn't I wouldn't jive with it a lot of other times, but in this specific one, I rock with it. I also think like the ability to sort of like take out each other's finish it also plays with like how close the near falls were like like they were they were extremely close near falls um like usually if you see like i don't mean to use that as an example but like john cena for example i mean he he's known that people kick out of the kick out of the aa more than anything now <laughs> and like and it's normally just like one two kick out like you would see with normal kick out um but to just like the just a millisecond before get the shoulder up is is yeah, it, it, that really allows it. It saves those finishers. It still makes them feel important. It still makes them feel like that could be it at any point in time. Um, um, that the fans in Japan were going crazy. I mean, they don't go like crazy during matches like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More subdued, but they were into this match and they were making mm-hmm. noise, especially for those near falls. And then they bought in hook line sinker. So as much as you can complain about the different near falls, the crowd bought in. And if you can get that crowd to buy in and to that extent, you're doing something right. Absolutely, yeah. It, it's amazing that, that these two guys have, have had, what, like three out of the past four dome shows or something like that where these guys have had that title match. And then, you know, they're getting ready to ring the bell before the main event uh, Monday morning, and that crowd is going crazy. Right. Like the, they haven't even done a move yet, and the crowd is going crazy. And that anticipation was so intense. And, uh, I mean – it, it, the match is special to me because Tanahashi and Okada, that's the combination that got me into Japanese wrestling. Um, I, I got kind of pointed in that direction when somebody wanted me to vote on like year end awards, you know, three or four years back. And I had to go and watch, you know, Okada and Tanahashi. I had to watch like two of their matches um, from like three or four years ago. Um, so I could fill out this, uh, fill out this ballot. And it was like, Oh, what in the hell is this? You know, that was, so and then to see this thing just go on, you know, year after year and just keeps getting bigger and bigger to the point where they're like stealing each other's finishers in that main event. And it was awesome. So like for me personally, I loved it and I was really happy that they that even though it was a combination that's been done, it's a match that seems like it feels like it's been done to death, that they still got everyone going by the end of it. I mean they I they didn't even really <laughs> not like it looked that hard. I mean, like the fans were into it the whole way, um, which is awesome. I, I you know, I, I can't say enough good things about about that match or those two guys. They are on another level. And then the right guy won, I think. This was yes. definitely a case of, you know, they they told a great story and, and really Okada, you know, is established as the guy right now. Like and yeah, I, I think it's and then people could argue that he was been the guy for, you know, years now, but you know, I think to American fans, he has. I don't know completely if he's been given that final, like, you are our top star. And I feel like this is a case of uh, them really doing that. Awesome. Uh, once again, I think uh, this opens up. I love that we have the accessibility of this. And even that, that you know, some of us can 
uh, uh, filter through all the Japanese writing and get in New Japan world and be able to actually watch this thing. You know, it, this wasn't on regular pay per view, was it at all? No, the, the, I don't the, believe so. Now, but we did have you did have options. So, so you know, I think I think uh, it did a long way to expose a lot of people to it last year. Uh, with that, even they were not with Global Force, whatever the hell Global Force is these days, I don't even know at this point. Uh, but. But that's no, cool. If you have a chance, um, New Japan World, uh, there are it, it, there are tutorials to sign up for it. Is that correct, uh, Eamon and Matt? Yeah, uh, your, uh, your Google Chrome uh, translator can can help you can get you through most of the way. It, 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 it does a, it does a pretty decent job. Does Make it? sure you tell your bank that you want to approve the international purpose. That's what happened to me. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't I didn't tell my bank before trying to do it and didn't take my car. I had to call the bank and they have to call visa and it's, I had to give them permission to do the international per- purchase and it went through. And, oh God. Okay. Yeah. Mine went through these. pretty fine. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I got the service and all that, but yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and I signed up like that night and like everything, everything worked well. Yeah. Like your Google translate will do a pretty good job of, you know, getting you through that whole stuff. Good. And Good. there's also tutorials that can help you unsubscribe to New Japan World, which can be tricky also if you're <laughs> not into that language thing. Because, um, yeah, some services I, like this. I, I don't know if I would do New Japan World around year-round, Yeah, but for Wrestle Kingdom and for the G1, yeah. I can see myself yeah. doing it every year. Uh, I, I, was I, loved, I love the G1. <clears throat> and, um, and I, I kind of feel like the way, I guess, a casual fan will feel toward WWE Network. Maybe, because to me, why wouldn't you have WWE Network year-round? But to be a casual fan, oh, I'll get it for the Rumble. I might get it for WrestleMania. I'll pick it back up again for SummerSlam or something like that. But I wouldn't get it for Battleground. Where mm-hmm. We might have it all year round. Where New Japan is like, oh, I don't know if I really want it for Dominion, but I get it for the G1 and Wrestle Kingdom, and you yeah, know, maybe, yeah, right. maybe the, the Super Junior, the, 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 the Junior tournament. So, and everything's so connected now. I mean, hey, welcome to the future. So if you know there's going to be a big match coming up, but you know, Invasion Attack, then you um. You're like, well, I guess it's time to drop my uh, 999 yen on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I saw that number. I was like, hey, oh yeah, that's right. Yen. That's Not, right. Yeah. Not dollars. Do I have that much yen? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what What does that work out to in American? I think uh, my, it was either, like eight eight thirty. Eight thirty. Wow, that's a steal. That's an absolute steal. That oh, that's awesome. Uh, but if you guys have any thoughts out there, Wrestling Kingdom, let us know at, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter or in the uh, Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show.